Good evening and welcome to Midway Stadium in St. Paul, home of the St. Paul Saints. We are here on North Metro TV tonight. Rosie Erickson and Matt Johnson bringing you 5-3A baseball. Boys, it's the section playoffs, the section 5-3A lower bracket semifinals tonight. Maple Grove, the Crimson coming in at 9-11. and 11. The Cougars on the other side coming in at 9-7. and 7. A couple of teams, Rosie, who need to win four straight games in order to take home the section crown right. both teams in this double elimination tournament have lost one game and the loser tonight goes home I know both teams are feeling confident they both have won three and lost one to get to this point and now they have to win four in a row to take it so I guess we'll see and it looks like Maple Grove is going to be the home team as they take the field first the Cougars are going to bat first and leading off is Isaac Collins Excuse me, it's going to be Mike Diggins, number 22, the third baseman for the Cougars, leading things off. The left-handed hitter takes an early strike. 0-1. The pitcher on the hill for Maple Grove and the Crimson is Brett Schultz. Schultz coming into this game with a 2.77 earned run average. 0-2 now. Two quick strikes. Schultz sets and delivers. Diggins called out on strikes, looking. And Rosie looks like that one hit the outside corner. Diggins didn't take a swing at it. Well, what's interesting about Brett Schultz is he's a ninth grader. That's a freshman, you know, and he's only been starting for the last three weeks. So he's been doing well. Meantime, Adam Anderson, second baseman, steps in the box. And he takes ball one. Anderson, number 14, the second baseman. One quick out here in the top of the first. And that one's a called strike to Anderson. Adam Anderson will be followed by Josh DeWitt, then Brandon Wozniak, the cleanup hitter for the Cougars. Ground ball down to third base. The throw over to first and the out. Excellent job defensively. Joe Franta squeezes it. Or excuse me. It was the third baseman, Ben Osborne. Nate Erickson making the out over at first base. Here's one more look. Simple ground ball, Rosie, no problem. Right, Osborne gets it back over to Erickson to make that easy out. It's never an easy throw from third base all the way across the diamond, but Osborne, great job Ugh. keeping his focus in this one. Swung on and grounded out near the pitcher by DeWitt. Looks like it hit his ankle off the bat. It was a dead ball, so it'll be a foul ball and a strike, but he's getting Ouch. up limping. Look at one more time. Hits his right ankle. And he is still right. stretching over here in the batter's box, or excuse me, on the on-deck circle, but it looks like DeWitt will be okay shaking it off, Rosie. That looked like bad luck right there for the odds. That ball coming in at a pretty good clip from the pitcher, Schultz, and anytime it hits off the bat on that ankle, it hurts. DeWitt now looks at an 0-1 count. After a hard-earned strike, watches ball one. Two outs now after the strikeout, then the ground out. DeWitt hits one opposite field foul uh, on the third or first baseline. DeWitt, the senior center fielder before the Cougars. Batting in the three spot, looks at one, two. This one grounded down, fair down the third baseline. It gets past the third baseman, Osborne, and DeWitt will reach first for the first Cougar hit. Let's look at this replay. DeWitt, as you see, hits it down the third baseline. Osborne not able to get that, had a hand on it, but Kubobek. Has to come back, but we'll see DeWitt on first. So a single by DeWitt, the first Cougar hit. Two down now, brings Brandon Wozniak to the plate. The cleanup hitter, Wozniak, the Cougar pitcher. Wozniak hits one nearly the same spot. It's gonna be just fouled on the third baseline. Looking in the same area there, as DeWitt was, Rosie. Looks like a good spot. 
typically those right-handed hitters will pull the ball down the third baseline. It's a lot harder at this level than it is right. in the pros to try to hit it opposite field. You can see, of course, everyone on the field defensively for Maple Grove has shifted right. towards left field, towards third base to try and sniff out the pull ball. That one Ooh. coming high and inside to Wozniak and fortunately gets out of the way. He gets a two ball, one strike count now with two down here in the top of the first. Again, the section 5-3A playoffs here at Midway Stadium in St. Paul. That one is low. Good eye, says third base coach and head coach Lynn Bruner, or Buner rather. Buner and the Cougars again nine and seven on the year. On the other side, Darby Carlson coaching the Crimson. This one's gonna get past third base too. Hit hard off the third baseman. Osborne that, could not handle it and it results in another Cougar single. That was really reminiscent of the last play by DeWitt. Once again, that hit goes down the third baseline, hitting off Osborne once again. Kubelbeck having to recover that. So we have one on first and second. The first runner in scoring position now for Centennial. And they bring to the plate Jake Osbeck, the catcher, a senior. A single would likely score a run if it's long enough for Centennial. First pitch fouled off over our heads here. Over the stadium. I hope you didn't park your car right I behind us. I have my brand new car. <laughs> It's the North Metro TV production truck that I'm more worried about than, Me too. than either of our cars. Clearly. 0-1 oh, now after the foul ball, two outs, a little change up, and he watches it for strike one. You can see that pitch, it had an interesting hanging on it. Excellent pitch. It was by Schultz, and now, Roller over to short, fielder's choice. They can't find anywhere to go with it. And it has been a frustrating first inning at third base for Ben Osborne, who fielded that one, but could not make a decision right. quickly enough on where to go with the baseball. It was tough because it was good effort by Osborne sliding to get that at the shortstop position. Now the bases are loaded for Centennial. Earl back with the single. Not sure if they're going to rule that a single or an error. Uh, I believe it'll be a single, though. Yeah, they do say it is a hit. Osborne at third is getting quite a workout tonight. That brings to the plate for Centennial Mike Major. Major, the left fielder, will try to bring in a run for Centennial with two down and the base is loaded. Here comes the pitch, the swing, and that one hits the left ankle of Major, and the Cougars getting a lot of contact here early on, Rosie. Right. But they're hurting too. The Crimson are trying to take them out early. <laughs> it looked like the same spot. That one hitting off the, kind of the wrist uh, portion of the bat, and Major knocks it right down to his left ankle. It makes it 0-2 two with two outs. That one just outside. Major with a good eye there. With two strikes and two outs, the base is loaded. The Cougars could use a hit here. The one-two set and delivery. That one looked like a breaking ball that didn't quite break. Good eye again for a Major, and it makes the count even at two and two. Pitcher sets and delivers. That one fouled off. Getting a piece of it is Major. Schultz hanging in there despite a long first inning here. He's already on the sixth Cougar batter. That one is low and it'll make it a full count. A walk here, Rosie. One more ball and the Cougars would bring in their first run of the afternoon. A big right. pitch coming here. Well, you know, Coach Buner said it'd be nice to start it early. Schultz pitches the delivery and then the foul ball for Major. Made some contact there going opposite field. Means he was just slightly behind it. And it's a good spot if he can place it there, fair territory. 
Schultz. On the pitch. Sets, winds, and delivers. This one hit right towards center field. It's short. It could be a base hit. Diving grab. And they're going to say it hit the ground. No, it's an out. A diving catch at center field. The umpires, a very delayed wow. call there. But they're going to give Joe Franta credit for a diving grab at center field, preventing one, potentially two or more Cougar runs. Look one more time. Let's see what we can see on replay here. Nice swing by Major. Franta comes in from mid center field, dives and it looks like he got it in the glove, did not cover it up. An excellent grab, losing his hat on the way by Joe Franta. I think I was a little confused by whatever fell off. It might have been his sunglasses, but I was like, he didn't really catch it. We'll yeah. take another look at that. Yes, that's a great look right there. It is. You can clearly see he caught it, but yes, yeah, something else, his hat fell off. And it looked like he may have dropped the ball, but he didn't. So nonetheless, after a half an inning, it is scoreless here at Midway Stadium. And so let's take a look at the Maple Grove Crimson lineup as they get set to come to the plate, Rosie, after allowing three Cougar hits in the top half. Mark here, it looks like, uh, again, running down Centennial in the last half inning. Mike Diggins struck out, ground out from Anderson, then three straight singles, and then Mike Major with <laughs> got robbed in center field. That was an amazing catch dive altogether by Franta. Here's a look at the Crimson lineup as we're set to see here. At shortstop, Isaac Collins will lead things off. Jake Kubelbeck will play left field. Joe Franta, who made that great catch, will bat third in the center field. And the cleanup spot is the third baseman, Ben Osborne. Blake Whitecotton, Tyler Field. The first baseman, Erickson. Mason McMahon at second. And the pitcher, Brett Schultz, will bat ninth for Maple Grove. On the hill for Centennial, as we mentioned in the top half of the inning, uh, is going to be number 18. Here's a look at the first pitch coming from Brandon Wozniak. Wozniak sets and delivers. That's going to be high for ball two. Does this miss you, make you miss your days of playing baseball? It does. <laughs> and you played for Centennial? I won't say who I played for. Oh. <laughs> Hit down the right field line, just barely foul. Great swing there and contact made by Collins. Rosie, that was a very close play over at mm -hmm. first base. And the Cougar first baseman, uh, Riley Ellison, had to really pay attention. He could have got hit there. Ellison, good heads up play but couldn't make the grab. Collins stands in looking down a 2-1 count. That one outside. Another one that looked like it was supposed to break but didn't from Wozniak. So 3-1. Wozniak sets and delivers. That one is in for a strike one. Strike two rather. Collins for Maple Grove coming into this game. He's going, he's going to be walked here. Collins hitting 315 on the season. That's his 16th walk. So that's what you want to do, Rosie. Get your leadoff man on base. That's exactly the plan. He did a great job there of being patient in the batter's box. Got him a run around with no outs. Right, obviously the goal is to start off early and get some runs in. Kubelbeck stands in now. He's batting 200 on the season. Watches ball one. The left-hander stands in with a man on first. Scoreless here in the bottom of one at Midway Stadium. The pitch, looking bunt, and then it's going to be strike one. Good idea to bunt. You just couldn't make contact there. Kubelbeck trying to get the man Collins over. The 1-1 one, one pitch. This time the bunt is down and foul. That pitch was high. Good strategy there by the Cougar pitcher Wozniak. 
trying to throw the ball high, knowing they're going to try to bunt, right. makes the batter go up high for the ball and try to bring it down, and it results in a foul ball there. So great job by the Cougar pitcher, Wozniak, forcing the foul ball. It makes right. it a one-two count, and now, Rosie, you can't bunt, because if it's foul, you strike out. Well, Wozniak is a smart pitcher. He's a junior. Kubelbeck will have to swing now. He does right back to the pitcher. Gets it to second base for one and back to first for the double play. Excellent job by the Cougars defensively. Wozniak got it right to his second baseman. Anderson, Anderson over to Elson for the double play. Wozniak grabs that, gets it to second once again to Anderson. Anderson gets it to Elson. It's actually the shortstop. Two outs. It's a shortstop who came over to cover second on the play. Correction. So it was uh, Luke Dents on the defensive effort before Centennial. Good teamwork there in the infield for CHS. One, five, three. Double play, the results of Kulabak's at Zafranta, the center fielder with that stellar glove will now come to the plate with two away quickly here. Franta, the center fielder, as we mentioned, he is the leading hitter on this Maple Grove team, batting 349 on the season. Their best hitter hitting in the three spot here. And looks down a 3-1 count. This one is foul deep to the warning track and out in left field. I have no doubt now that he could be the best hitter out there. Major gave it chase in deep left field, but it was about 10 feet foul. Good effort by Major here. That one hit about 315 feet as the train goes past the outfield now. It's one of my favorite parts about Midway. 3-2 count with two outs. Swung on, Franta gets it to the first baseman, gets it over to the pitcher, who covers first and not in time! Wow. A tough play there, and the umpire says that Schultz, excuse me, that uh, Wozniak, who was covering first, moved his foot off the bag. Watch right here is the first baseman, Elson, gets it to Wozniak, puts his right foot just short, or maybe it was on the back. Tie goes to the runner, or what? It does. <laughs> it does, but it's. I think what they're debating is whether whether Wozniak's foot touched first base. Look one more time here. Watch his right foot. Does he touch first base? Oof. It looks like it did. It was beat out by Franta. Excellent hustle by Franta. That 90 feet down the first baseline, he was quick to get there, and it results in a base right. hit. And now he's trying to get him out. He needs payback. <laughs> So it brings Ben Osborne to the plate, who was riddled with baseballs over at third base defensively in the first half of the inning. They're trying to steal now, and safe at second is Franta. So a stolen base can be added to his resume. An excellent job by Franta. It was a slow delivery from Wozniak, the Cougar pitcher. Not happy with the call. No, the catcher for Centennial, Jake Earlbeck. Got it down to second base, but not in time. So a runner on second with two outs, swing and a miss from Osborne before strike one. A man in scoring position now. You can see the frustration on Wozniak's face. Hoping they would have had that out. One got past him. From the stretch now comes Wozniak. Looks down, the runner at second. Swung on, foul ball by Osborne. Of course, Wozniak now pitching from the stretch and is going to have to watch that runner at second. Stealing third is a little bit harder than stealing second, but don't put it past the speedy Franta. That one high. Franta looks like he's on a mission out there. Stealing bases, cutting it close. That speed down the first baseline. He got the speed down the right. second baseline. His speed out in center field to catch mm -hmm. that diving ball coming after him. The 2-2 count now, swing and a miss for strike three. Going down on strikes is Ben Osborne swinging the first strikeout of the night for Cougar pitcher 
Ben Wozniak, and that makes up for the, the stolen base that got away. The arm on the stolen base by Earl Beck was not enough. Look at this nice hanging breaking ball. Didn't quite break as much as he wanted it to. This is a pitch, Rosie, that usually batters are able to take advantage of. But fortunately for the Cougars and Wozniak, a swing and a miss there for his first strikeout. It did look like Osborne was trying to hit it out of the park. So one hit in the bottom half of the first for Maple Grove. They, the Cougars walked Collins. There was the double play, then the single, the stolen base, and then Osborne striking out. Here's a look at your Cougar lineup. Mike Diggins, as we mentioned, led off as at the catcher position. Adam Anderson at third, batting second. Josh DeWitt, the center fielder, bats third. The pitcher Wozniak, the cleanup hitter. Earl Beck at first, batting fifth. Riley Ellison at left field, batting sixth. It's then Lord and Ewings, Luke Dents, and Mitch Rudy, the right fielder for Centennial. Here. Defensively, Maple Grove has Brett Schultz pitching, White Cotton, the catcher, Nate Erickson at third, Mason McMahon at second. The shortstop is Collins, Osborne at third. The outfield is Kula Kubelbeck in left, Franta, the stellar catch in center, and then Tyler Field playing right field. We've seen great defense, Rosie, early on mm -hmm. by both teams. The great catch yeah. by Franta for Maple Grove. Centennial getting the double play. Excellent job defensively by both teams early on. Both coaches said it's one of the toughest conferences around, so they're happy just to show up today and be able to play their game. Batting for the Cougars now is Riley Elson, his first at bat of the night. And two early strikes to the Cougar first baseman. The lights just coming on now here at Midway. We are just about at 6 o'clock p.m. Doesn't get really dark here. That pitch got away high. Doesn't usually get dark till about 8.30 or so this time of year, but it's an overcast evening. Fortunate to dodge the rain tonight. Nonetheless, need those lights, Rosie. Right. The one-two pitch is inside, and it hit him. It hit the batter. So Riley... Elson will go to first now on the hit by pitch. Watch one more time. Ooh, hit his that knuckle. Was close. Taking one for the team. Indeed. Elson will be on first because of that hit. Look how close that was. From that angle, it's hard to see. Mm -hmm. I think that first angle was a good one, too. Our North Metro TV crew doing a great job of bringing you all the images here of tonight's game. That was very close, but nonetheless, Elson will take the. the walk hit by a pitch goes to first base now the pitcher looks over to first thinking steal and Elson's gonna move on to second he's got room to go to third on the wild throw he will hold up there and get two bases off the wild throw trying to get the out so the Cougars just like that with nobody out have a man on third base the leadoff guy incredible Elson able to Advanced to third by, was that a wild throw or a missed pass, you know? You got to make that play, and it looks like the catcher, the pitcher, rather, for Maple Grove just Schultz uh, hurried that one a little bit. It got away from him. He was looking down the runner at first. Now here come the Cougars. They get a, a run to score here off the fielder's choice. Centennial is going to get an out here, but they're going to score the first run of the game. They now lead one to nothing. Look one more time. Luke Dents dribbles one to the shortstop, makes the smart play over to first for the automatic out. And the Cougars will score the first run of the game. So excellent job. Dents the sacrifice. And gives the Cougars the first run of the game. Scoring is Elson, who stole a base earlier. So one nothing Centennial here, the one one count with one out in the bottom of the first. That one swung on hard down to third base. 
Make it over to first, no problem. Collins. Excuse me, it's. Um, Collins is at shortstop. Right, the first Able baseman. Able to that. Erickson making the play. So two outs now. Another Cougar retired, and that brings up the top of the order again, and Mike Diggins as Mitch Rudy grounded out. So Diggins to bat here his second time tonight already here in the second inning. Grounds one over to second base. No problem for the Maple Grove. Second baseman Mason McMahon gets it to Erickson for the out. And so after one full inning, or excuse me, one and a half, it is one nothing Centennial. Something uh, Centennial coach, obviously, Buner said is he's taking it one game at a time, and I think that's smart, focusing on that particular game, not looking ahead. And, you know, they have a young team, but I think they're pretty well coached. Coach Buner has been around for a long time coaching this team. Look here at the Centennial defense. We didn't get a chance to show you this in the previously. The pitcher again is Wozniak. Michael Diggins at catcher. Earl Beck playing first base. Jordan Ewings at second. Luke Dents at short. Adam Anderson at third base. Riley Elson, who scored the only Cougar run, playing left. Josh DeWitt in center and Mitch Rudy in right field. Last time they played each other, uh, Centennial actually defeated Maple Grove four to one. So we'll have to see what happens today, but you know, Centennial at least has that on them. So who knows if that builds their confidence or if, you know, Maple Grove's gonna wanna have payback. Correction, wanna let you know Adam Anderson is the second baseman for Centennial. Blake White Cotton now, the junior catcher, steps into the box, the righty for the Crimson. First pitch is way outside from Wozniak. White Cotton. The number five hitter for the Crimson. This one in the strike zone. Hit high to short right field. Nice grab there. No problem making the catch for Centennial is Rudy. The fly out to right by White Cotton. Brings up Tyler Field, the right fielder for Maple Grove. Left handed batter. Field looks at strike one in the outside corner. Field, a pretty good hitter in his own right, batting 328 on the season. Slugging percentage up near 500. This kid gets the bat on the ball when he needs to in clutch situations. Right now he's faced with an 0-2 count though in his first at bat tonight with one away. The set, the delivery is high. The Cougar catcher, Earl back having to stand up to squeeze that one from Wozniak. Wozniak delivers, swing and a miss and strike three. Wozniak's second strikeout of the evening. This time the victim is Tyler Field. So as we see Wozniak able to strike out Field just below. Looks like a little that. sinker there. Right. Ball coming up and falling down right at the last minute. Excellent pitch by Wozniak. It's so interesting to see these guys. They're only 17, 18 years old, but mm -hmm. still able to play around with these batters with some very difficult pitches to throw. Right. Brings up the right-handed Nate Erickson, the Crimson first baseman. Look how wide his stance is in the batter's box. He's taking up literally the entire batter's box from the front to the back. His left foot wow. touching the chalk at the front, his right foot nearly touching the chalk in the back of the box. And he looks at strike three, a quick K there for the Cougar pitcher Wozniak gets his third 
Strikeout. So after two, a run on three hits and no errors for the Cougars. The Crimson, no runs with one hit and an error. My name is Debbie Foss. I'm a high school freshman. I speak German. I like baseball. I argue with my sister. And I make my own TV shows for free at North Metro TV. Get started by signing up for free TV production classes at 763-231-2803 or eric at northmetrotv.com. Welcome back to Midway Stadium here in St. Paul, home of the St. Paul Saints. Today, it's Maple Grove and Centennial playing boys baseball here at the high school level. I'm Matt Johnson. Joining me is Rosie Erickson here on North Metro TV. It is the top of inning number three after two complete the Cougars. Oh, no. The visitors here trailing, excuse me, they lead Maple Grove 1-0. It's been a fun two innings thus far. We're at Midway Stadium, people. A great facility it is here. This one is going to be a tough play for the shortstop. Making the play for Maple Grove is Isaac Collins. Off the bat of Centennial's. Leadoff hitter of the inning. It was Adam Anderson who grounded out to the shortstop. That brings up Josh DeWitt. Another one hit hard to the shortstop, and he too will be thrown out at first. Two similar plays in a row hit to shortstop, gotten out at first. Two very quick outs here to start the inning. That brings up Wozniak, the centennial pitcher who has a single in his first at bat. One for one on the evening. Wozniak looks in, that one high over his head. Don't want to let your pitcher get hurt. Yeah, a lot of times these guys, uh, these teams elect to have a designated hitter instead of having their pitcher hit, mm -hmm. but sometimes your pitcher is your best hitter, so you want him to be out there. <laughs> that one's going to be outside for ball two. Wozniak this time drills one over the head of the center fielder, but making the play is Joe Franta again. Franta with the speed. He came forward a little bit. They teach you to go backwards first as an outfielder, not forward, but he made the play regardless. Right. So through two and a half, it is Centennial one. Maple Grove nothing. Rosie now be back after this. Join Ben Hale and Danica Peterson every Friday on North Metro TV News. Lionel Lakes is the gateway to the metro area, just minutes north of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Conveniently located on I-35W, this growing city still maintains its North Country feel. Lionel Lakes values its award-winning schools. Outdoor lovers will discover miles of hiking, biking, and water trails. Growing businesses will find premier development opportunities with great freeway visibility and ready to help your businesses grow. Come to live, work, and play in Lionel Lakes. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with an SD deficiency? Do you feel that you're missing out on the fun of high school sports coverage? Then take a weekly dose of sports stand on North Metro 15. You'll be updated with highlights and analysis of your local schools, Blaine, Centennial, and Spring Lake Park. Warning, taking sports stand may increase levels of adrenaline, resulting in cheering, applause, and high fives. Milder side effects may include a desire to see yourself on sports stand and in rare circumstances, answering trivia questions and winning t-shirts. Sports stand work for me. Ask your coaches if it can work for you. 
We are back here on North Metro TV. I'm Matt Johnson, joined by Rosie Erickson. We are set for the bottom of the third inning here at Midway Stadium. The Maple Grove Crimson coming to bat, trailing one to nothing. The Cougars scoring the run in the first after a batter was hit by a pitch, stole, or then uh, actually was uh, leading off first base when Maple Grove threw the ball past him, at fir past the first baseman, resulting in the runner advancing all the way to third base and then being hit in. They seem to be pretty evenly matched. Maple Grove 9 and 11 coming into this one. Centennial 9 and 7. Mason McMahon at bat. Pops one to short center field. The Cougars having to talk and bobbling it a bit, but making the play is number 15 for Centennial. Excellent job by Luke Dents, the shortstop, who makes his way out there to meet the center fielder. Colliding. Great job grabbing it. Looked like DeWitt and Dents needed to talk a little more. Ran into each other, but they made the play. That's the toughest play to make in all of baseball, in my opinion, but great job of Chatter. This one is fouled off towards the first base side, and the first baseman makes the grab. Excellent play there by Elson. Elson getting their only run in the second inning, I believe that was. Or was it the bottom of the first? Yep. Regardless, it's one to zero for Centennial. So up to bat now, we're up to the top of the order for Isaac Collins, the Maple Grove left-handed hitter. This one outside for ball one. As train number two comes by on this beautiful Monday evening. That pitch is just in there for a strike. Hitting the outside corner is Wozniak. Collins watching that one go for strike one. Wozniak from the set looks down the pipe and that one just a bit low. Excellent pitch. It looks like 2-1 the count now to the Crimson hitter Collins. Collins walked his first time up. Collins this time fouls went off behind the plate, hitting the net, guarding those faithful fans in front from being hit by the baseball. Faithful fans. 2-2 two, two now with two outs. That one outside for ball three. That'll make it a full count to Collins. Collins steps a foot outside the box. Gets ready, takes the pitch from Wozniak. Strike three, that one, he watches it. Touch the outside corner, it's the fourth strikeout of the evening by Wozniak and gets the man looking. So at the end of three, the Cougars remain on top, one nothing in the section 5-3A lower bracket semis. We're back after this. Come to Ham Lake and see how good life can be. Conveniently located only 20 miles north of the Twin Cities on Highway 65, yet Ham Lake has kept its rural charm. Residents of Ham Lake enjoy one acre minimum lots, giving you space to live with abundant natural green spaces and recreational activities like boating, fishing, golf, disc golf, camping and playgrounds, and tons of seasonal fun all year round. Ham Lake is home to one of the top school districts with consistent high scores in standardized testing and community ratings. Ham Lake is a business-friendly city and willing to work with businesses and developers of all sizes. Whether you are just starting out or looking to grow, Ham Lake has the business opportunities you've been waiting for. Life in Ham Lake moves a little slower and that's the way we like it. Ham Lake offers space to live, to grow, and space to relax. Come visit Ham Lake and see for yourself what you are missing. Ham Lake is convenient country living. Back here on North Metro TV, Maple Grove, the Crimson, playing host the Centennial Cougars on this neutral site and a beautiful one at that, Midway Stadium, where the St. Paul Saints play their summer baseball and their season. Hey, let's go! 
underway here soon. Coming to bat for the Cougars now. In the top of the fourth is DeWitt, pops one. In foul territory beyond the first base side and the second baseman for Maple Grove making the grab is Mason McMahon, who himself popped out to short center field last inning. Here's one more look, Rosie, at the bracket for this Ray. tournament. Obviously, Maple Grove beat Totino to get here. And then both of them want to win today, obviously. And then whoever wins today will go on to play Champlin Park in the lower bracket championship. Then uh, they have to beat Coon Rapids twice to win the section. And this one flied out to center field off the bat of Mike Major. It was Earl Beck, not DeWitt, on the previous at bat. So that one to fly out to center field. Two quick outs here in the, the Cougar half of the fourth. And that brings up Riley Elson, who was hit by a pitch, stole a base, and scored his last time up. <laughs> Elson here, ground ball to the shortstop. Long throw in time for out number three. So this time, no such luck for Elson. He had an active first inning, but here in the fourth, the ground out to short for out number three. We're halfway through the fourth. It's one nothing, Centennial. I'm a high school freshman. I speak German. I like baseball. I argue with my sister. And I make my own TV shows for free at North Metro TV. Get started by signing up for free TV production classes at 763-231-2803 or eric at northmetrotv.com. Good evening and welcome back to Midway Stadium with Rosie Erickson. I'm Matt Johnson. North Metro TV bringing you Section 5-3A lower bracket semifinal action in boys high school baseball. It is one to nothing. The Cougars of Centennial leading right now over the Maple Grove Crimson. We are set for the bottom of the fourth. Maple Grove will step up to the plate and Jake Kubelbeck, who grounded out into a double play his first time up. The left fielder for the Crimson watches strike one. Boys got lucky today. It's good weather, great weather to be playing baseball. Not too hot, not too cold, right in the middle. Four strikeouts for the Cougar pitcher tonight. One and one count now. Here comes Wozniak. That one is a little bit low for ball two. Wozniak already with four strikeouts and he's thrown 41 pitches now that one in there for strike two evening the count at two balls and two strikes Kubelbeck the lefty watches the ball come out of the mitt swings on it gets a good bat on it but it goes right to the second baseman no problem for Centennial and a great stop and toss over to first from Anderson for the first out of the inning. Anderson making the play of for Centennial. First inning seemed to take a while to get through, but now they've just been flying by. Yeah, this game moving very quickly. We're just about 35, 40 minutes in. Already at the bottom of the fourth. Franta, the senior center fielder, at bat now for Maple Grove. Did have a single his first time up and stole second base. This one fouled back into the net. Four strike number one. Franta looks down 
the glove of Wozniak. Swings on this one, just barely gets a piece of it. Looked like Wozniak had him fooled there. Great job by Frant of making contact. Wozniak just seems very poised, Rosie, every pitch. Right. Well, you know, I think he pitches a little bit of everything. We've seen that tonight. Right. They said he pitches fastballs, sliders. He has a good changeup, and we've already seen all that. We saw the slider once result in one of his strikeouts. 2-2 two -two count now. That one right back to Wozniak. It'll make it through the infield over the outstretched arms of the Cougar shortstop. Trying to make the play was Luke Dents, but it will be a hit for Franta, his second of the evening. He's two for two now. That one is exactly where you want to place it, right down the middle. Franta hits it down the middle. Wozniak tries to grab it, and then Dents tries to slide. It just goes through all of them. Finally, I believe that was DeWitt getting it in center. Backing up the play was DeWitt. So a runner on first. And taking a large lead at first is Franta, who's already stolen once on the slow delivery of Brandon Wozniak. Let's see if Franta tries to steal again. It's a 1-0 count. Look at how far he's leading off there. Wozniak from the stretch now. Looks over to first, makes the throw over. And no, no problem there for Franta to get back. That pickoff move. Wozniak certainly learned his lesson from the first time. From the stretch again here, Franta leading off will stay at first. Swung on foul ball by Osborne. With a 1-1 count now and one away, man on first for the Crimson. With the speed of Franta on first, the Cougars and catcher Jake Earlbeck out to be on the lookout here. They look over Franta again, gets back, no problem. Good job by Wozniak of keeping Franta in check, looking over there a few times, keeping he him honest. He doesn't trust him at all. <laughs> the 1-1 one, one set and delivery. Franta is going, the ball fouled off right behind us over our heads here in the press box behind home plate. Makes it 1-2 now. Look at those Cougars lined up. In the dugout. Actively watching as their team sets up defensively. Wozniak again in the one two delivery. That one just outside. That pitch had a bit of movement on it, too, there, Rosie. You talked about the plethora of pitches that he has, and mm -hmm. that was a good looking one there. Coach Buner said he really has a little bit of everything. Two and two now. Osborne swings high fly ball. The shortstop will come in all the way to the pitcher's mound and make the catch, and that's a tough catch to make. You don't want to trip over that hill on the pitcher's mound. That's the toughest play as an infielder, and Luke Dent's doing a great job of making the play. Osborne hit it really high fly ball. Dent took his time. Found the position to catch that ball. It brings up Blake White Cotton now, who flew out to right field his first time up. White Cotton, the second best hitter on this Maple Grove team, batting 347 on the season. Two away and a man on first. White Cotton watches ball one, twitched a little bit, thought about it. Mm -hmm. Good eye, though. Wozniak looks down, White Cotton. The man on first, Franta, with a good lead again. Franta will stay. White Cotton hits this one into right field, short right field. Making the play for out number three is Mitch Rudy. So we'll call it an F9 officially on the score sheet. White Cotton is out. The Crimson are out. Cougars lead 1-0 after four. Join Ben Hale and Danica Peterson every Friday on North Metro TV News. 
Lionel Lakes is the gateway to the metro area, just minutes north of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Conveniently located on I-35W, this growing city still maintains its North Country feel. Lionel Lakes values its award-winning schools. Outdoor lovers will discover miles of hiking, biking, and water trails. Growing businesses will find premier development opportunities with great freeway visibility and ready to help your businesses grow. Come to live, work, and play in Lionel Lakes. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with an SD deficiency? Do you feel that you're missing out on the fun of high school sports coverage? Then take a weekly dose of Sports Stand on North Metro 15. You'll be updated with highlights and analysis of your local schools playing Centennial and Spring Lake Park. Warning, taking Sports Stand may increase levels of adrenaline, resulting in cheering, applause, and high fives. Milder side effects may include a desire to see yourself on Sports Stand and in rare circumstances, answering trivia questions and winning t-shirts. Sports Stand work for me. Ask your coaches if it can work for you. Back here on North Metro TV, Rosie Erickson, I'm Matt Johnson. It is section playoff time. The Centennial Cougars, technically the visitors here tonight against Maple Grove at Midway. Luke Dents steps in here in the top of the fifth. Dents grounded out on a fielder's choice his first time up. Takes ball one high and tight at the chin. Watch out, Rosie. <laughs> I like how you said that. <laughs> 1-0 now, that one's going to be ball two, a little bit low and outside, so early two balls, no strikes to Dents. Dents the Cougar shortstop. Looks in, the pitch from Schultz is high. For ball three, three and oh now, this is a hitter's count for Luke Dents. Takes the pitch from Schultz, swung on, right to third base. Easy play for the Crimson, and finally, the third baseman gets a break as he was very busy was Ben Osborne that right. first inning. Makes a nice play here. That brings up Mitch Rudy for the Cougars. Watches strike one. Rudy. Grounded out to the shortstop, his first time up. Looks down 0-1. That one just barely hitting the end of the bat right to the second baseman. No problem for the Crimson. And the out, McMahon getting his glove on. Interesting how he chose to hit it, you know, both times. He positioned himself, but then he leans back to put himself into that ball. And that resulted in that ground ball just off the the ball of the bat at the end and not where you want to be hitting it. You got to try to get on that sweet spot. Two away now quickly and the Cougar half of the inning. This one's flied out and hustling to make the play in left field is Kubel back. So quickly the Cougars go down like one, two, three. Diggins fly out to left. It's still one nothing Centennial halfway through the fifth. Come to Ham Lake and see how good life can be. Conveniently located only 20 miles north of the Twin Cities on Highway 65, yet Ham Lake has kept its rural charm. Residents of Ham Lake enjoy one acre minimum lots, giving you space to live with abundant natural green spaces and recreational activities like boating, fishing, golf, disc golf, camping and playgrounds, and tons of seasonal fun all year round. Ham Lake is home to one of the top school districts with consistent high scores in standardized testing and community ratings. Ham Lake is a business-friendly city and willing to work with businesses and developers of all sizes. Whether you are just starting out or looking to grow, Ham Lake has the business opportunities you've been waiting for. Life in Ham Lake moves a little slower and that's the way we like it. Ham Lake offers space to live, to grow, and space to relax. Come visit Ham Lake and see for yourself what you are missing. Ham Lake is convenient country living. Good evening and welcome back to Midway Stadium. The Cougars on top of the Crimson here as we are in the bottom of the fifth. Rosie Erickson and Matt Johnson, our entire North Metro TV crew bringing you the action. The winner of this game again will go on. The loser goes home. Tyler Field, the senior, looks bunt here and 
didn't get the bat on it. Four strikeouts for the Cougar pitcher Brandon Wozniak tonight. And the Crimson bring Tyler Field, the right fielder, to the plate. He struck out the first time up, one of the many victims of Wozniak's arm this evening. 1-1 one, one the count even here. And now that's going to be ball two, a little bit low to field. Tyler Field batting 328 on the season. Field swings and misses a little bit over the top of that one. In fact, he got a piece of it and went into the catcher's glove for strike two. Great job of squeezing it by Jake Earlbeck. 2-2 two, two now to Field just outside. The umpire, that was a close one. the umpire himself, recognizing how close it was, delayed calling it for the drama. <laughs> and indeed, there was Dramatic. drama. <laughs> you could see the drama there. <laughs> Full count and out of field. Swing, and that one's going to be a fair ball right in front of the catcher. The quick toss is low, and a bad throw there. The toss from the catcher, Earl Beck, was low and beyond the outstretched arms of the first baseman, Elson. So it's going to be an error on Centennial, resulting in a man on first base field will reach on the error. Look at this replay field. Hit it barely into the ground, it bounces, and catcher Earlbeck runs up to get it to first Elson, but looked like an error there. Elson could reach himself. Excellent job by Elson of trying to reach out there. But as you said, he couldn't quite stretch far enough. If only he was eight feet tall. Yeah, like he, me. No. He might, he, you're, you're pretty close, Rosie. Six feet. Let's at get seven, it right. At seven feet, 11 inches, you're pretty close to eight feet tall. Right. I'm a tall one. The, anyway. batter, the batter now, <laughs> the right hand. We have so much fun together, Rosie Erickson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nate Erickson steps in. Excuse me. Uh, Maple Grove's number eight stepping in now. Looking bunt again, and is going to miss for strike two. So twice, the Crimson look. And it is Erickson. Field went to bunt as well, and now Erickson twice in a row. Trying to get Field over to second seems to be the plan, but with two strikes, he's going to have to take a swing at it. Erickson swings, misses. He was high over the top of that one. The fifth strikeout for Wozniak tonight. Erickson. Struck out his first time and does so again here. This time swinging. Caught looking the first time. Watch one more time. That was high and tight. Certainly not one you got to swing at, but you get anxious up there. You know you need to make a play and you want to swing at it. Brings Mason McMahon to the plate. The second baseman for Maple Grove. Nice drive into center field. A diving grab by Centennial's Josh DeWitt. For the second out of the inning. DeWitt quick on his feet to make the play. Look at this one one more time, Rosie. Great hit to center field. Looked like DeWitt had to put a lot of effort, but the speed helped him there. That is not an easy to play, an easy play to make, speaking as a former center fielder. And that was a good an look. excellent diving effort by DeWitt. Now the runner going on the slow pitch. An excellent slide. He's out. What a play. Oh, my goodness. That was wild. He slid through his legs. The catcher with the arm for the Cougars. Earl Beck makes the play down to second for the final out. We'll take another look at that one right after the break. Stick with us on North Metro TV. Debbie Foss. I'm a high school freshman. I speak German. I like baseball. 
I argue with my sister, and I make my own TV shows for free at North Metro TV. Get started by signing up for free TV production classes at 763-231-2803 or eric at northmetrotv.com. Back to Midway Stadium in St. Paul. As promised, let's take one more look at that last play. The hit here by McMahon it was the, the diving catch. And then after that, we saw an excellent stolen base attempt by the Crimson, but an amazing play by Adam Anderson at second to tag him out on the shoulder as he slid underneath the Second baseman Anderson had his legs open, trying to grab the ball and lean down to make the play on the Crimson player who was trying to steal, and he hit him just in the shoulder as the guy went through his legs. Yeah, and now we see Anderson up to bat. It is Adam Anderson who looks at sort of a wild pitch there. One and one the count. Anderson's got to catch his breath after making that play. That looked like an ESPN Sports Center right. top play Highlight. that you'll see in the majors. <laughs> Anderson, a chopper down to second, easy out for the Crimson. Good play there by Erickson, making the play. You've got to make, grabbing it at first. Brings up Centennial's. Jake Earlbeck, the catcher who made a fantastic throw down to second. Excuse me, it is not the catcher. It is <laughs> number 22, Diggins. Number two, DeWitt, rather. Who is it? All these, no. all these twos, Rosie. <laughs> My apologies right. to our viewers for not giving you the quality call you deserve on that one. <laughs> uh. This is quality. Josh DeWitt fouling one off now makes it 1-1 with one out. Here in the Cougar half of the sixth inning already. DeWitt looks down, takes the pitch from Schultz, swung on and fouled off into the dirt right behind the catcher. DeWitt, one of Centennial's three Hits on the evening, a single in the first inning. DeWitt here, right down the middle, a slow roller. Hard throw from the second baseman, another good out there and a great play by Mason McMahon to retire DeWitt. DeWitt is now see. one for three on the evening. DeWitt hits it down the middle, down to second. McMahon is able to throw it with ease to Erickson to get DeWitt out at first. Brings up the Cougar pitcher Wozniak, watches a strike on a nice breaking ball there from Schultz, an excellent pitch to his opposing pitcher. That one outside, rolls past the Crimson catcher White Cotton. It, the, the rain dirt. just came out of nowhere. I think it came out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. Yeah, the lights are on here, gray skies. It doesn't look like this will last very long. A few sprinkles here and there, but you can see the sun hiding behind the clouds in the distance. But nonetheless, the umbrellas are out. 2-1 two with two outs to the Cougar pitcher. This one is popped up, foul. That one missed. Erickson, the first baseman, hustling over, but you could see that ball winding right. And he it hit. Erickson's glove, and it will be a simple strike. Look at this one more time. He hustles over there to make the play, but then it curved away from him. His big catcher, or first baseman's mitt, gets a piece of it, but unable to make the play. The count now is full to the Cougar pitcher. Wozniak batting here, gets a bat on it down to second base. Nice play again for the Crimson down at second. McMahon going to his left out in the outfield grass to make the play. The Cougars are gone. We get set for the bottom of the sixth after this on North Metro TV.
Join Ben Hale and Danica Peterson every Friday on North Metro TV News. Lionel Lakes is the gateway to the metro area, just minutes north of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Conveniently located on I-35W, this growing city still maintains its North Country feel. Lionel Lakes values its award-winning schools. Outdoor lovers will discover miles of hiking, biking, and water trails. Growing businesses will find premier development opportunities with great freeway visibility and ready to help your businesses grow. Come to live, work, and play in Lionel Lakes. Have you or someone you know been diagnosed with an SD deficiency? Do you feel that you're missing out on the fun of high school sports coverage? Then take a weekly dose of Sports Den on North Metro 15. You'll be updated with highlights and analysis of your local schools playing Centennial and Spring Lake Park. Warning, taking Sports Den may increase levels of adrenaline resulting in cheering, applause, and high fives. Milder side effects may include a desire to see yourself on Sports Den and in rare circumstances, answering trivia questions and winning t-shirts. Sports Den work for me. Ask your coaches if it can work for you. Oh, one's on it. We are back here at North Metro TV. The Crimson about to come to bat. But look who's been on fire for Centennial. Red hot for the Cougars has been Brandon Wozniak tonight with five strikeouts. Look at these pitches. The ball dancing around the plate. And Wozniak right here. That breaking ball is clutch. And you can see the frustration in the batter's eyes. That one didn't even break. And it still worked out for him. Now we're back to live action here. He pitches uh, the first one here outside for ball one to Corey Pollyon, who is into the game for the Crimson. He is replacing Brady Meyer in the lineup, the number nine hitter. Meyer, the number nine hitter, with no hits tonight. So Pallion comes in, the senior, to replace him at the designated hitter spot, the number nine spot in the order. Pallion watches at four straight balls and earns a walk. So after we show you how great Wozniak yeah. has been tonight, <laughs> right. striking out five batters, he walks one I for his first walk of the night. Just thinking that now we have a runner. We're gonna have a pinch runner. Pinch runner. A pinch runner now. So running for Pallion will be Benson. Pallion just had to show up to the base and stand there. <laughs> yeah, all he had to do was show up to the plate and uh, watch four pitches go by. Now he's quickly back out of the game. And so we'll see if Benson will remain in the game and bat the next time up. So back to the top of the order now. Isaac Collins for the Crimson looks bunt right to the Cougar third baseman making the out at first. And then watching, looking back, the runner at second is Centennial the first baseman Elson, so Elson makes the out on the bunt. Great throw from the Cougar third baseman, Diggins, who dug it out of the dirt, no problem, making the first out of the inning. It was as if Diggins knew he was going to bunt. He was prepared and already walking up there. Yeah, the infield was in a little bit, and so it worked out for the Crimson as they got their man on second now. The pinch runner, Benson at second, oh. Wozniak, Looks back to runner, throws. We get a foul ball now all the way down into the bullpen area. Wide left of third base in foul territory. Kubelbeck comes to play now, the junior outfielder. Kubelbeck playing tonight at left field. He is hitless tonight as well. He shows bunt but pulls back for ball one. Wozniak again with five strikeouts, one walk tonight. Thrown 50 plus pitches, probably nearing 60 here. Showing bunt again, but pulling back is Kubelbeck. It's now a 2-1 count. Bottom of the sixth, the Cougars and Coach Buhner have got to be pretty happy that Wozniak has got them this far through five and a third so far. That one right to the third baseman Diggins, digs it out again, gets it over to first to Elson for the out. Two away now here in the crimson half of the sixth. Franta, the center fielder, coming to bat now. He grounded 
Or he actually has two singles tonight. He's two for two on the evening is Franta, and he has that diving catch in center field. Franta having a very good night for Maple Grove. With a man on second and two away. A single would tie the game, and this could be it. Franta will get to first. The long throw home is not in time. The Crimson tie it up. The RBI single for Franta, his third hit of the night. Franta shows up at a much needed time. You know, they're down by one. And we'll look at this replay. The pinch runner Benson will score easily from second on the single here. The Cougar right fielder hitting his cutoff man. Rudy gets it to the cutoff man, but they're unable to make the play. The speedy Benson, who pinch ran, did his job exactly what he was supposed to do and scoring the run for the Crimson, making it a 1-1 one, one game now here in the late innings. A man on first now. That is Franta. Means Ben Osborne steps in with two away and now two strikes after a foul ball. Back over our heads again, hitting Rosie's brand new car. <laughs> Don't you put that on me. You didn't hear the glass break? <sighs> that would be terrible. I would not wish anything like that upon you. Well, thank you. 0-2 oh with two strikes to Osborne. The set, the delivery way high. It's a pitch out. And excellent play. The arm of the Cougar catcher. Not enough, though, to get the runner, Franta steals his second base of the evening and puts another man in scoring position for the Crimson. I was going to say, you better watch him. He will steal. The Cougars planned that. They knew Franta was going to go. So the Cougars, Wozniak, threw it high on purpose to Earlbeck so Earlbeck could get a good throw down to second, but he bobbled the ball out of his mitt, and that resulted in... Franta making it to second because Rosie, that was a close play. Mm -hmm. If Earlbeck doesn't bobble that, it's almost a sure out. Full count now, three balls, two strikes to the batter Osborne. From the stretch, Wozniak delivers, swung on in the gap, through the infield, and a long throw, play at the plate, safe at home, standing up is Franta, and the Crimson take the lead on the RBI. What an inning double. for the Crimson. Osborne with the double right here. That one past the outstretched arms of the Cougar shortstop, Luke Dents. And on the throw to home, not in time, easily making it to second is Osborne. And easily touching home plate is Franta who has had a stellar game tonight for Maple Grove. First time in the lead. I'm sure it's a sense of relief. Relief now that they're in the lead and now we saw Franta come home. I'm running He's out of room. He's been doing well. Next I know. to Franta's name. There's a lot going on. <laughs> he has two stolen bases, three singles, an RBI, and a score to run. It's... Blake White Cotton, the Crimson catcher, stepping into the box now. And quickly, the Cougars find themselves down two to one. Two runs scored this inning by Maple Grove. That pitch nearly getting away from Earlbeck and thinking about trying to get over to third on the ball in the dirt was Osborne, but he thought better of it. Two away now. The 1-0 pitch from Wozniak, driven over the head of the Cougar shortstop. The Crimson will score another run. Standing up at home plate is Osborne, and it's three to one, Maple Grove. They're still going, Osborne with a run, making it three to zero for the Crimson. White Cotton, a great hit here, his first of the night, a line drive over, just over the head of Luke Dents, the shortstop. Unable to get enough air there to make the catch. And Osborne trots home to make it 3-1.
That was tough because Luke Dentz was stretched out. He dove for that, just could not get there. One step too early. The Cougars are taking the rain tarp off of their bullpen, and it looks like they will have somebody warming up. I think it's going to be Ryan Spencer. who's going to be warming up in the Cougar bullpen. The Cougars have a quick meeting at the mound and Coach Buhner talking things over, making sure the infielders are set and giving his pitcher a time for a few throws over in the bullpen. So perhaps time is almost done for the Cougar pitcher. And this one is going to be a single right up the middle. So Tyler Field gets a hit. It's the Fourth straight hit for the Crimson. They've got seven now on the evening. And it is getting rough out there for Brandon Wozniak, who had five strikeouts. After that walk, Rosie, that four-pitch walk, he's allowed four hits straight now in this subsequent inning. And understandable, the Cougars may need to get a fresh arm in there soon. Right. So man on first and second now for the Crimson, who lead three to one standing in is Nate Erickson who already has struck out twice tonight. Erickson looks in Wozniak the 0 one pitch ball that one looked close. So evens the count up at one now big inning for the Crimson here. They trailed 1-0, now lead 3-1. This one driven beyond the left fielder. One run will score. The ball trails to the warning track and hits the outfield wall. A second run will score. And sliding in for an easy triple is Nate Erickson. The big hit, it scores two runners for the Crimson, and it is 5-1, to one. two RBIs there for Erickson. Erickson, wow. Erickson hits it out to left field. That was a great hit. Major just couldn't get there. Little, I wouldn't consider it an error. No, 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 absolutely not. It's a solid hit and a great play. Field scores one of the runs. And I believe Brandt have a number 12 scoring the other run. It's funny. I was saying they're having a good inning, but now it's just everything. It's and a huge inning for them. Five runs this inning. There are two outs, and that'll be it for Cougar pitcher Brandon Wozniak. As we guessed, his time was going to expire soon. Ryan Spencer will come in to replace him now. He's in the warm up. We're going to take a breather back after this on North Metro TV. Come to Ham Lake and see how good life can be. Conveniently located only 20 miles north of the Twin Cities on Highway 65, yet Ham Lake has kept its rural charm. Residents of Ham Lake enjoy one acre minimum lots, giving you space to live with abundant natural green spaces and recreational activities like boating, fishing, golf, disc golf, camping and playgrounds, and tons of seasonal fun all year round. Ham Lake is home to one of the top school districts with consistent high scores in standardized testing and community ratings. Ham Lake is a business-friendly city and willing to work with businesses and developers of all sizes. Whether you are just starting out or looking to grow, Ham Lake has the business opportunities you've been waiting for. Life in Ham Lake moves a little slower and that's the way we like it. Ham Lake offers space to live, to grow, and space to relax. Come visit Ham Lake and see for yourself what you are missing. Ham Lake is convenient country living. Back here in the rainbow lit skies of Midway Stadium, a beautiful view there out towards right center field where the sun and rain mix, Rosie, for a beautiful sky tonight. <laughs> Showed up. You know who else showed up? Who? The Maple Grove Crimson yes. tonight. A five-run sixth inning so far, and it's not done yet. Mason McMahon pops one up to second, and finally the inning is over for the Cougars, who have had quite an eventful one. Adam Anderson makes the grab at second, but not after a five-run sixth inning. 
The Crimson now lead 5-1. We'll be back for the seventh after this. My name is Debbie Foss. I'm a high school freshman. <laughs> I speak German. I like baseball. I argue with my sister. And I make my own TV shows for free at North Metro TV. Get started by signing up for free TV production classes at 763-231-2803 or eric at northmetrotv.com. Welcome back for the top of the seven. Some of the crowd on hand here watching the Crimson clash with the Cougars on North Metro TV. My friend Rosie Erickson and I are here. And Rosie, what are you tweeting right now? Can <laughs> you share this with our viewers? Secret. <laughs> uh, well, I am Debri and I make commercials for free on North Metro TV. I love that commercial, so I had to tweet it. We love Debri, uh, the youngest person probably ever on the North Metro TV crew, but he doesn't just do this sports stuff, he does a lot of other stuff too, like make his own TV shows. So congratulations to our Blaine High School freshman, about to be sophomore, Devery Foss, for helping us out. Uh, among the many greats we have here at North Metro TV. Rosie, that was a uh, five run, sixth inning for the Crimson, as the Cougars now come to bat. Five Crazy. straight, five straight hits they had. Right including a triple from Nate Erickson at the end of the inning, which brought in two runs. Centennial, last time they batted, they were up 1-0. Now they find themselves in a four-run hole. And a lot of work to do here in the seventh. Well, double elimination. That could have been Wozniak's last pitch, right? It very well could have been. He was replaced late in that last half inning. The Cougars now, nice diving catch by the shortstop for the Crimson. It's Isaac Collins leaping up and grabbing the ball, nearly making a snow cone catch, as they call it, just in the tip of the web of his glove, but squeezed it for the out. The hard hit line drive by Centennials. Jake Earlbeck brings Major to the plate. Major with a single. This one into the outfield over the head of the shortstop. A big Cougar hit there, and it's Major's first of the night. The Cougars needed that one. I was saying earlier, Rosie, to your point, that uh, Wozniak was replaced by Spencer Ryan. Ryan new Spencer. Cougar, or Ryan Spencer, yes, the new Cougar pitcher in that last half inning. The train going by. Hurry up and hit a home you know run what's and hit the train. My brother's a conductor. He might what? be in there. Who knows? Choo choo. Can you do the sound? <laughs> choo. Let's hear it. I don't know. Woo -woo. That's how I do. Okay, that's not the sound, but okay. No. Choo choo. <laughs> I don't know, which one are we going with? <laughs> you have like 18 siblings, so <laughs> you probably have a brother that does everything. Uh, like exactly, that. all day. I don't even know. I thought my seven other siblings, in addition to me, was a lot, but you have quite many more. But you're blessed, Rosie, you're That's blessed. right, I'll agree on that, some days. The sun has peaked back out now, the raindrops have gone away. The train is here. The Cougars are down four, but have got a runner on first, and Elson steps in to the plate. He was hit by a pitch in the first and he stole a base and scored a run. He ground out his second time up and steps in now with an opportunity to advance the runner, if not hit him in, as Major steps over at first. Schultz. This one's gonna be a ground ball. Error! Past the shortstop. Major slides into second safely. That one passed Isaac Collins. Collins, who made a fantastic play previously this inning, watches that one go right past him. And very, very rare error on Collins' part. Right. Gives the Cougars a man in scoring position. I think Collins maybe got a little ahead of himself on that one. Trying to slide and glove that one. So Elson reaches on an error. 
The Cougars have got a man on first and second. Schultz will step off now off the rubber. And Luke DeWitt will step in for Centennial to bat with two men on. Down by four in the seventh. That one by Schultz thrown outside. Great job of scooping it up by White Cotton. Dance the senior shortstop. A 1-0 count with two men on in a big spot here. Hard chopper to short. They get it to second for one and two. Double play. And that was a very that close was. call at first base. And that, I don't know how he was called out. The, the umpire and Centennial's coach Buner are in each other's faces out there on the field. And understandably so, I think what Buner may be arguing wow. is that is that they um, this would be obviously the end of the right. game here. Unfortunate. It looks like they're arguing that he may have not stepped on second base for the out. Then they called him out at first too, which Ooh. I thought the throw was late. Regardless, that would signal the end of the game in, on such an abrupt note. Right. Let's look one more time, Rosie, at how it officially will end right here. Let's see, do they touch second base? Maybe. Second the throw was to there, first but is not even close. Not even close. But They're, you know, it's called, it's over. They're not taking it back. <laughs> regardless, they, they beat the runner to the bag at second, regardless of whether the, they touch second. Mm -hmm. But clearly, the Cougars beat out the throw to first. Luke Dents. You know, but you have to credit these umpires. They did a great job all night. Right. It is very tough with the naked eye to make these calls. And that one, he made it by a foot Ooh, and yeah. almost two steps. So oh. you win some, you lose some. The Cougars will fall tonight. Five to one to Maple Grove on a questionable call to end the game. Well, now we'll see the Crimson play Coon Rapids. And they have to beat them twice to take it. They've got to win one more game first. Oh, yes, and then you're they right. would play Coon Rapids. Champlin Park. So they have to beat Champlin Park and then beat Coon Rapids twice. Indeed. So their work is cut out for them, but they've still got a chance. The Cougars, meantime, will end their season with that call right there. Centennial was 9 and 11 coming in, 9 and 12 now. And Maple Grove moves on in the Section 5-3A lower bracket, the semifinals of Boys State High School playoffs. 5-1, to one, the final score once again for my colleague Rosie Erickson, our entire North Metro TV crew and director Matt Waldron. I'm Matt Johnson. Have a great night, everybody.